Okay, so I know the previous video said May 25th, Monday, but I didn't realize we weren't having class on Memorial Day. So these videos will be for May 27th. So the one that says May 25th was your part one, and your part two will have the correct date of May 27th, 2020, and this is part two. We're finishing up our workbook, page 108. Um, <clears throat> so hopefully you've had time to um, uh, read the, um, reread the uh, email at the top of the page. If you haven't, go ahead and do that and take time to answer questions two through six, okay? Because now I'm going to go over the answers. So number one, it says, what is the landlord going to fix tomorrow? And your answer is B, new curtains. Okay. Uh, what is Claudia going to do? Oh, I'm sorry. Go back to number one. It says, what is the landlord going to do tomorrow? The answer is B. Put in new carpet because <clears throat> up at the uh, uh, in the paragraph in the email we see that um, he's scheduled to put it says uh, he's going to put in new carpet tomorrow. Number two, what is Claudia going to do? Uh, fix the curtains, make new curtains, or wash the curtains? Your answer is B, <clears throat> make new curtains, because it does say Claudia is going to make new curtains for all the rooms. Number three, Rico is not upset about the jammed windows. Why? A, because it's cold outside, B, because it's hot outside, or C, because the landlord will fix them tomorrow? The answer is A, because it's cold outside, because it says it's winter now and we don't need to open them. So that that's a fix that can wait until um, you don't want to open the windows in cold weather. So it's something that can wait until the weather warms up. What is the problem in the children's bedroom? A, the windows are broken. B, the curtains are torn. Or C, the carpet is stained. The answer is C, the carpet is stained. Okay, it says the carpet in the children's bedroom is stained. So that's in our paragraph, so our answer is C. Number five, what does Rico like about the apartment? A, it's sunny and the rooms are big. Uh, B, the landlord is nice. Or C, the curtains are beautiful. The answer is A, it's sunny and the rooms are big because the in the last near the last sentence it says the rooms are big and sunny. So he likes that. So answer is A. Number six says, why did Rico write this email? A, to complain about his landlord. B, to tell his parents about his new apartment. Or C, to make plans for uh, the spring. And the answer is B. He's writing this email to his parents to tell him tell them about the new apartment. Okay, so that's um, page 108. There's your answers. Please take time to make any corrections. Go ahead and stop the video and complete uh, two, part two and part three on page 109 and then come back and we will go over them together. Okay, so hopefully you pause the video and you did part two and part three on page 109. Um, let's go ahead and um, uh, say and repeat the vocabulary at the top of the page. Uh, bent. 
bent, broken, broken, burned out, burned out, cracked, cracked, dripping, dripping, jammed, jammed, scratched, scratched, stained, stained, fireworks, torn, torn, Okay, so you should have filled out uh, part two so we can go over those answers. So uh, number one is done for you. Uh, when the light bulb doesn't work anymore, it's burned out, okay? So the light bulb is burned out. And uh, we see two is uh, broken, it's... Um, pointing to a broken window. Number three, we see a faucet with water coming out. The water is dripping from the faucet. Number four, um, the chair leg is bent. Okay, number five, uh, it looks like the wall has some cracks in it, so it's cracked. Number six, um, if you can't open something, a drawer or a door, it's jammed. If you can't open something, it's jammed shut. Number seven, um, we see that the curtains are torn. Um, number eight, um, is scratched. Okay. I think that's a bookcase and it looks like it has some uh, scratches on it. Number nine, the chair is stained. Okay, when uh, you, if you spill something on there or something leaks onto furniture and it, or clothing and it causes it to be discolored, it is called stained. Okay, so there's the answers to part two. You can uh, stop the video if you need to, to make any corrections, because we're going to move on to part three. Okay. Okay, so part three says complete the sentences and use the words from exercise two. So we're using the same words that were uh, in that list of vocabulary for part two. So number one says, the window won't open. It's jammed. So windows, doors, drawers, anything that won't open is jammed. Number two says the other window is broken because we see it has some um, cracks. It's kind of shattered. The window is broken. One light bulb is burned out. When uh, a light bulb doesn't work anymore, it's burned out. Uh, number four, the faucet in the kitchen is dripping. Faucet is where you turn on and off the water in your kitchen, so it's dripping. The curtain is torn. Number six, the wall is cracked. Number seven, one chair has a bent leg. Okay. Number eight, the other chair is stained. And number nine, last one, the bookcase is scratched. Okay, so once again, you can make any corrections that you need to to part, uh, part three. But after you're done with that, making corrections, I would like for you to go ahead and pause the video and uh, read those sentences out loud. <clears throat> and that will help you uh, with reading fluency. And uh, also, it gives you more um, 
practice on vocabulary. So go ahead and take and pause the video and uh, do that and then um, come back and we'll be in your student book. Okay, so um, I hope you've put your uh, workbook away, and now we're into the student book, the ones we use for class. And um, turn to page 117 right here, page 117. So uh, we see some pictures that um, we covered the vocabulary already in, to, in the workbook, but we're going to be using those again to... Um, Label the pictures. So, um, do you know the words for the things in the pictures? Like, look at number one. Now, <clears throat> that's a window. A window. Number two, that's a faucet. Number three is a chair. Number four looks like a piece of wood. Number five is another chair. And number six is lights. Number seven is a wall. And on number eight, we see a carpet with a cup that has spilled. And number uh, nine, we see uh, the outside of a building, obviously. So now we're going to use uh, the vocabulary uh, bent, uh, on part A, bent, broken, burned out cracked, dripping, jammed, scratched, torn, and stained. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and um, pause the video and then I'm going to play the track for you and we will go through the pictures together. Okay, I've already pulled up the QR reader and we're going to go through it together. It's going to go through the uh, vocabulary in the pictures. Exercise 4A. Track 29. 1. Broken. 2. Dripping. 3. Torn. 4. Scratched. 5. Bent. 6. Burned out. Seven, cracked. Eight, stained. Nine, jammed. Okay, so there's your answers to the um, the pictures on page one seventeen. Um, see, number one, we see a broken window. Number two, a dripping faucet. Number three, the seat of the chair is torn. Number four, the wood is scratched. Number five, the chair is bent. Number six, the light is burned out. Number seven, the wall is cracked. Number eight, the carpet is stained. And number nine, the window is jammed. Okay, so now we're going to do part B, and I'm going to, I've got Colby here to read with me, but he won't be in frame. So we're going to do part B, where we're using the pictures from part A to make sentences to um, make a conversation. So the example one says, What's the problem? My window is broken. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. Okay, so number two. What's the problem? My faucet is dripping. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. Number three. What's the problem? My chair is torn. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. Number four. What's the problem? The wood is scratched. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. More, more fireworks. Okay. Uh, number five. What's the problem? Um, 
my chair leg is bent. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. Number six. What's the problem? <clears throat> my light is burned out. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. Number seven. What's the problem? Uh, the wall is cracked. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. Um, number eight. What's the problem? The carpet is stained. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. <laughs> number, the last one, number nine. What's the problem? The window is jammed. Could you fix it, please? Sure, I'll try. Thank you, Colby. So, um, if you have somebody that that's there that you can um, practice uh, going over those sentences and talking about the different um, problems, um, that would be a good idea. Okay, I'm going to go small in the screen again. Okay, so let's think about back to um, the notice that Stella wrote on page 116. What were some of the uh, problems in her building? What were some of the problems in Stella's apartment? Um, so we're going to write it in a paragraph form. In Stella's apartment. There were no lights in the hallway, comma, right? A leaking ceiling, comma, um, broken windows. comma, and smelly garbage. Okay, so um, those were the things that Stella was uh, going to talk, have the meeting about. So, um, so what is Stella going to do about the problems? So Stella is having a meeting to talk about the problems in the building. Okay, so she's um, having a meeting. Who is she going to meet with? Who was Stella going to meet with? Stella is meeting with the other tenants. Okay, so tenants are the people that live there that also uh, pay rent, okay? So um, if you have problems where you live, what are some of the things that you can do, right? If you're a renter um, or a tenant, you probably need to uh, notify The landlord or property manager. Okay, so probably when you moved in, they told you if you have like a water leak or if one of your appliances aren't working, they probably gave you a name of a number of someone to notify. Now, if you're the owner, you're going to have to find someone to fix the problem. Okay, you're going to have to call, like a, uh, we talked about electricians for electrical work, and we talked about you need to call a plumber 
for anything that has to do with water. So let's look back on page 117. Page 117. And who would you call for the broken window? Who would you call for the broken window? Um, you probably could call like a general contractor and they could come out and put in a new window. Number two, who would you call for a, uh, wa a dripping faucet? Who would you call for a dripping faucet? You would call a plumber, right? Number three, we see a torn chair. Who would we call? Well, if it's fabric, we're going to have to um, uh, possibly find somebody who does upholstery, which upholstery is putting fabric on, uh, taking off old fabric and putting on new. Um, number four, we see the scratched wood. I would call probably a general contractor for that too, somebody who, um, you know, has the tools to sand it and paint it, so, uh, or stain it. Number five, a bent chair, probably just throw it away. But if you know of someone who can fix that, um, that you could probably, uh, same thing with the burned out light bulb. You can probably find someone you know that may have a ladder and change out a light bulb. But if it's an electrical issue, you need to call an electrician. So number seven, we see um, cracks in the wall. We're probably gonna call a general contractor for that also. And number eight, we see stained carpet. So we would probably call like a carpet cleaner or somebody who could come in and specialize in getting out stains. And if a, a window is jammed, I would also call probably a general contractor. Okay, so this is the end of part two. Um, uh, part three will also be on for May the 27th and we'll pick up there.